but this $1.15 also includes mailing the box back to the producer. There's an accounting fee on line 13. That accounting fee is $2 every month. That covers the charges that Texas passes on to the herd producer, and they keep track of all the counting or the bookkeeping, if you will, on your herd. So, if you are in line 16 allowed a credit because you pay too much, then you will get your money back. Texas will send will will let you know that you have a credit. Likewise, they will always let you know if you have a debit. <laughs> so in line 16, you need to add that in. Other charges would be extra copies or extra dough pages, and you would figure that out from here, um, from the other sheet that we're going to show you on rates, and put that in here. And you may want to total it. Line 17 is the grand total. Line 18 is the amount of the check and the check number. We always need a check or a money order when your samples are received into the laboratory. At the end of this, a supervisor's name and address has been added to our new form. The reason for that is so the supervisors get paid on time. If Texas can identify the supervisor more readily, then the tester themselves will be paid more readily. On, on, on the invoice, uh, the charges that we have in the $4 a month for a herd of the size of 1 to 20 will include two copies of the herd identification 213, two copies of the DMS 201 supervisor barn sheet, one copy of the DMS 210, which is a monthly report. That comes every month to the producer and includes all the postage. In addition, dough pages, like I talked about, will be mailed at 305 days of lactation around October and November. And then the kit identity listing will be mailed out once after, once after the kitting is completed about May or June. Now I know that varies from herd to herd, so whenever the kitting is finished is when the kit identity listing will be sent out. If there are any additions, like you always want to receive a dough page, we will have to charge for the processing of the paperwork, which means printing the paper, the cost of the paper, and mailing the additional papers to you. There are any extra copies, the same reason. It's we have to print the paper, have printer charges, and mailing charges, and to cover the student help that we have now, too. Like I said before, there's also another form that comes in the, in the sample box. Every month, sampling and sample handling techniques is included. We need the sample vials identified with a GOAT ID or the GOAT name or both, but we prefer the use of a black Sharpie as compared to the greens and the blues and the reds. The black seems to withstand any spilling of any other milk so the numbers don't rub off or any water that may hit it in the process of going into the water bath to heat it up to the temperature. Um, in this section, once the milk sample has been taken, there's always a bromopol tablet that's put in there as a preservative. This keeps the milk for six to seven days where the composition changes very little. You don't need to shake it vigorously. You just need to invert it three or four times. Make sure that all the lids are closed tightly and that there is no leakage. Uh, it's not necessary to refrigerate the, the samples or freeze them. If they are exposed to extreme heat during the summertime, there will be some problems with the milk samples. And when you go to mail the samples themselves, or when you go to finish closing the box up, it's advisable if you turn your milk samples over in the box, the milk fat itself will form a line at the top of the vial. So if this vial is inverted, the milk fat line will be here. When we turn it around to put it in our water bath, it just gives the milk fat a better chance to be mixed in and to be recorded accurately. Okay, this is the milk box that is sent. We designed this box to accommodate 20 animals because that's usually the typical size of a goat herd. We have larger boxes. It just cuts down on the mailing cost of, for the producer themselves if you use a smaller box. So if you have a herd size over 20, we can send two boxes to them. What we would like is if each of the milk samples, as you are collecting them, in the order of the barn sheet, the first animal would go here, and you would go from left to right, and then from top to bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, and then six would start here. 
The reason for that is, is we always analyze the milk samples themselves in the order of the barn sheet. Therefore, there is no question as to what animal was sampled where. You will also have a sticky envelope here that all the paperwork can slide into along with the check. Hint, hint. And on the outside of the box is a smaller envelope with a 3x5 card with the producer's address on it and the lab's address on it. So there's no readdressing of the boxes. It's just a matter of flipping a 3x5 card and closing the, the sample envelope that's like this. Um, a typical scale, a barn scale, you can use to uh, measure the milk weight itself if you are using scales instead of meters. The scale itself has to be certified every year. Documentation of that certification must be on file in our laboratory. There's other services available for that. Uh, the weights and measurements in, the air, in your area may be able to provide that to you. Uh, we do have an address of a place in Missouri that will do scales and certify them for you. I think it's like a six dollar charge, but um, there are places and we need the certification on file. In taking the milk sample, you have your milk in the bucket, you take your dipper, place it in the bucket, stir the milk around, bring the dipper back out, dump the milk into the bucket, take the dipper, place it back down in the bucket again and stir it again before taking the sample. When you pull the sample out of the milk and open the vial up, be sure not to touch the edges of the milk vial itself because that preservative tablet may have formed some of the preservative line on the top which will contaminate the milk or contaminate the dipper. And You just take this and you dump it into your vial and make sure you close the vial tightly. That completes our review of what you need to know for the paperwork and now comes the test. And this is the test. Uh, you need to take it and if you're mailing this back to me, my address is here. I'll review it and let you know if there's anything that you missed on the test or what you need to do to, to understand something of the procedures. And from there I will be sending you information that you need to fill out and submit when you do your first test for a producer. So you, all you need to do is add these doughs onto the DMS-213 and the DMS-201 that we talked about. The one thing I wanted to point out is the doughs on that previous page, you are adding them into this herd. This herd is already on test. This was the last date of the test. This is the current date of the test. These are important dates that you need to know. You need to fill in the date that you're taking it your name and address and circle here if you are a new tester or just being recertified because there's different kinds of paperwork that you'll end up filling out. Good luck.